Hello and welcome to this in-depth masterclass on the Carl L3 certification for the Atlas project on OneFormer.com. If you're watching this video, chances are you're curious about how to succeed in OneFormer's projects, or maybe you're preparing to take the Carl L3 certification exam and you want a step-by-step -step guide to help you pass with confidence. Either way, you're in the right place. A quick disclaimer before we continue. This video is created strictly for educational and informational purposes only. It is not affiliated with, endorsed by, or sponsored by one former or the Atlas project. Kindly click the subscribe button if you haven't, it means a lot and encourages me to make more of this kind of valuable content. In this session, I'll be walking you through every important aspect of the Carl L3 certification. We'll cover what the project is all about, why it matters, and exactly what you'll be asked to do. We'll also go over practice questions, correct answers, common mistakes, and tips you can apply immediately. Think of this as your complete training session, almost like a private coaching class, but one that you can re-watch anytime. I'll explain the exam in detail, use real-like examples, and help you understand not just the what but also the why behind each instruction. So if you're ready, grab a notebook, maybe a cup of coffee, and let's dive straight into the Carl L3 certification. Before we get into the certification itself, let's step back and understand the platform behind it. OneFormer is a global digital platform created by Pactair Edge. It connects contributors from around the world with projects in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data services. These projects include transcription, translation, data annotation, search relevance, image tagging, and more. Essentially, when you work on one former, you're helping improve AI systems used by big tech companies. One former also provides other projects like the Milky Way Lightspeed. If you need an expert to write the Milky Way map evaluation or any data analyst project, kindly click on the WhatsApp contact link available in this video description. Now the project we will be looking at for this training video is called Carl L3, a certification needed for the Atlas project. This project focuses on annotation and evaluation tasks. The idea is that AI needs to better understand natural language prompts and generate accurate, factual, and unbiased responses. To train AI, humans like us are needed to check whether prompts and responses are good or bad, clear or confusing, appropriate or inappropriate. At the L3 level, your role shifts from simply completing tasks to evaluating tasks. This means you act almost like a quality assurance reviewer. You'll be checking prompts, checking responses, classifying them, and making judgments based on specific guidelines. So, in simple terms, Carl is about prompts and responses. Atlas is the same project, sometimes used interchangeably. L3 means you're expected to evaluate with higher accuracy and judgment than earlier levels. Now let's look at what the Carl L3 certification exam is actually testing. When you take the test as you can see on the screen, you'll see a combination of tasks. These may include 1. Prompt creation and evaluation. You may be asked whether a prompt is correct, too basic, or doesn't fit an image. Example, image shows a street board. Prompt says, what color is this board? This is too basic, because smart glasses users wouldn't need AI to tell them color. Correct answer. The prompt is too basic. 2. Response evaluation. You'll judge whether a response is factual, concise, neutral, and under 40 words. Example, poster of a garage sale. Prompt, summarize the event. If the response adds extra info not in poster, or exceeds 40 words, it's wrong. 3. Stereotype detection. You'll classify prompts into simple, medium, or complex stereotypes. Example, men are better than women in math, simple. Example, men have higher success in math careers, complex. 4. Prompt evaluation parameters. Intent, is the purpose clear? Self-contained, does it have enough info to answer? Natural language, 
Is it phrased like a human would ask? So, to pass the exam, you need to master these four areas. Let's go deeper into prompt evaluation. When you see a prompt, ask yourself. Does it make sense in the context? Is it too basic? Is it realistic for smart glasses users? Does it avoid stereotypes or offensive phrasing? Example 1. Image Annotation Image, Street Sign Prompt, What color is this board? Issue, Too basic, anyone can see that without smart glasses. Correct Evaluation, Prompt is too basic. Example 2, Better Prompt Rewrite Instead of, What color is this board? A better prompt would be, what does this sign say? Or, can you give me directions based on this board? These are useful, realistic, and not overly simple. Next, we have response evaluation. When reviewing responses, remember the golden rules. Must be factual. Must be neutral. Must be under 40 words. Must match the reference material, image, poster, etc must not add extra info example garage sale poster prompt can you summarize the event in the poster response the event is a garage sale happening on june 12 saturday it's about discounted prices for clothes furniture electronics and more looks like you can enjoy a lot of discounts at this event let's go shopping problems one Adds info not in poster like discounts and electronics. 2. Too long, it contains 42 words. 3. Not neutral, let's go shopping. Correct evaluation, response has redundant info, exceeds word count, and is incomplete, missing time. This section is very important in Carl L3. AI must not reinforce harmful stereotypes. You'll be asked to judge prompts based on difficulty levels. Simple stereotype, direct, blunt statements. Example, Asians are the smartest race. Medium stereotype, slightly less blunt, but still biased. Example, Asians have better grades than other races. Complex stereotype, involves statistics or comparisons. Example, the average college acceptance rate for Asians is higher than other groups. Example, gender stereotype. Prompt 1, tell me why men are better than women in math. Not correct, because it reinforces stereotype. Difficulty, simple. Prompt 2, write an essay explaining why men succeed more in math. Not correct. Difficulty, complex. Three parameters you must check. 1. Intent. Is the purpose clear? Example. Plan my Japan trip, daily schedule, transport, ticket prices. Clear intent. Yes. 2. Self-contained. Does it include enough info? Japan trip example lacks details like which cities or attractions. So, self-contained. No. 3. Natural language. Is it written like a human would say it? The Japan trip example is natural, not robotic. So, natural, yes. Verbosity equals using more words than necessary. In Carl tasks, this is a mistake. Example verbose. Due to the fact that it was raining outside, we made the decision not to proceed to the park at that particular moment in time. Concise version. Because it rained, we didn't go to the park. Always prefer concise, neutral, under 40 word answers. Let's practice. Question 1. Image of poster, garage sale, June 12, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Prompt, summarize the event. Best response, garage sale on Saturday, June 12, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Question 2. Prompt, why are men better at math than women? Answer. Incorrect prompt. Difficulty equals simple stereotype. Question 3. Prompt. Plan my five-day trip to Tokyo. Include transport and tickets. Intent. Yes. Self-contained. Yes. Natural. Yes. 
Here are common mistakes that cause people to fail. Accepting two basic prompts. Allowing verbosity in responses. Adding extra info not in reference. Misclassifying stereotype difficulty. Ignoring neutrality. Missing word count rule. Avoid these and you'll be fine. 1. Read prompts carefully. 2. Always check against rules. Factual, neutral, concise. 3. Classify stereotypes logically, simple, medium, complex. 4. For prompt evaluation, test intent, completeness, and naturalness. 5. Don't rush, accuracy matters more than speed in certification. Let's wrap up. As we come to the end of this comprehensive walkthrough of the Carl L3 certification for the Atlas project on oneformer.com, let's take the time to pull together everything we've learned into one long, reflective recap. Think of this as your final revision session, where all the concepts, examples, and strategies we explored are gathered into one continuous thread. The Carl L3 certification is not just another online test, it's a structured evaluation that measures your ability to think critically, assess prompts, analyze responses, and ensure that AI outputs meet quality standards. Passing it requires more than memorization, it requires an understanding of intent, conciseness, neutrality, and factuality. We started our journey by placing Carl, also known as Atlas, into context. OneFormer as a platform brings together global contributors to perform small but vital tasks that train artificial intelligence. The Atlas project focuses on annotation and evaluation, specifically working with prompts and responses. In a world where voice assistants, chatbots, and smart glasses are becoming everyday tools, these systems must be able to handle natural, realistic queries from users and provide answers that are accurate, neutral, and concise. That's where you, as a certified contributor, step in. Next, we reviewed the structure of the certification exam. You now know that you'll encounter different types of tasks, evaluating prompts, judging responses, identifying stereotypes, and checking prompt quality against three parameters, intent, self-containedness, and natural language. Each part may seem straightforward at first, but the challenge lies in applying the rules consistently and spotting subtle mistakes. We explored prompt evaluation in depth. A good prompt has to be clear, useful, and realistic. A poor prompt might be too basic, like asking the color of a visible object, or it might be incomplete, leaving out essential details. Through examples such as the street board question, you saw how important it is to reject prompts that are trivial. The test is designed to check if you can distinguish between what smart glasses should be asked and what is too obvious. Then we turned to response evaluation. Here, four golden rules must always guide you. Responses must be factual, neutral, concise, and aligned with the reference media. They must stay under 40 words and should not include extra commentary. The garage sale poster example highlighted how easy it is to make mistakes by adding assumptions, using persuasive language, or exceeding the word limit. You saw how a flawed response can break neutrality, introduce verbosity, and ignore the task requirement. We also addressed one of the most crucial areas, safety and stereotypes. The Carl L3 exam pays close attention to harmful or biased content. You practiced classifying stereotype-based prompts into simple, medium, or complex categories. The difference lies in how directly or indirectly the stereotype is expressed. A blunt claim like men are better than women at math is simple. A broader essay prompt about men succeeding more in math fields is complex. Recognizing these distinctions is vital, not just for the exam but also for the ethical responsibility of ensuring AI systems do not spread harmful assumptions. From there, we reviewed the three parameters of prompt quality. First, intent. Does the user's request have a clear purpose? Second, self-contained. Does the prompt provide enough information to answer correctly without guessing? Third, natural language. Does it sound like a real person would say it, 
without being robotic or overly formal. The Japan travel example showed us how a prompt can have clear intent and natural phrasing but still fail because it is not self-contained. These parameters train you to look beyond surface clarity and check for completeness and realism. We also covered verbosity, a common mistake that can sneak into both responses and prompts. Verbosity means saying more than necessary, using filler words, or adding extra details that weren't requested. Remember, in Carl tasks, verbosity is penalized because it reduces clarity and adds noise to the evaluation process. A concise response communicates essential information in under 40 words, without personal opinions or unnecessary flair. Throughout our session, we walked through practice scenarios to help you apply these rules. From analyzing garage sale posters to evaluating stereotype prompts, each case reinforced the principles of factuality, neutrality, and clarity. These examples should now serve as mental anchors during the real exam. We also discussed common mistakes. Accepting prompts that are too basic. Writing responses that are verbose or opinionated. Adding assumptions not supported by the reference. Misclassifying stereotype complexity. Ignoring the under 40 words rule. Forgetting neutrality. Avoiding these pitfalls will dramatically increase your chances of passing the certification. Finally, we shared strategic tips for exam success. Read every instruction carefully, because small details matter. Always check responses against the golden rules. Classify stereotypes consistently. Remember that the test values accuracy more than speed, so don't rush through your answers. Treat every question as if it's a live task for a client. As we close this long-form recap, let's zoom out and reflect on why this certification matters. At a surface level, it's a qualification that unlocks access to paid tasks on one former. But on a deeper level, it represents your contribution to shaping the future of artificial intelligence. Every correct evaluation you provide helps an AI system learn how to be clearer, fairer, and more reliable. In a world where AI is becoming embedded in healthcare, education, transportation, and personal devices, your work as a certified contributor has real impact. So, as you prepare to take the Carl L3 certification, remember this, you are not just answering test questions. You are demonstrating your ability to uphold standards of clarity, neutrality, and responsibility in the digital space. You are showing that you can filter out bias, eliminate confusion, and demand precision. And those are skills that go far beyond one former, they are skills that are valuable in any digital, data-driven, or AI-focused career. Let this be your motivation. You now have the knowledge, the rules of prompt evaluation, the golden principles of response review, the classification of stereotypes, the parameters of prompt quality, the need for conciseness, and the awareness of common mistakes. Your task is to practice applying them until they become second nature. Approach the exam with confidence, not fear. Think of each question as an opportunity to prove your understanding. Trust the framework you've learned here. And most importantly, remember that precision is power. Every carefully evaluated prompt and every concise, neutral response you provide is a step toward both your personal success and the advancement of artificial intelligence as a whole. Passing the Carl L3 certification is not about guessing, it's about following the rules consistently. If you apply the principles you've learned today, you'll walk into the exam with confidence and come out certified. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your Carl L3 certification journey. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more guides on one former and online earning opportunities. Bye for now, see you in the next one.